on that uh, switchback coffin zero, I, I thought it, I was going to get real close to the pole and give you guys a real exciting shot. And, uh, well, sometimes you hit the pole instead of getting really close. So I, uh, I finally found out what would happen if I smashed that pole at speed. Moim pierwszym DVD było DVD Drew Stone'a, Urban Street Bike Warriors. Zrobiło to na mnie bardzo duże wrażenie, ponieważ pierwszy raz widziałem takie ewolucje wykonywane na motocyklach. No i strasznie mnie to zainspirowało, strasznie mi to dało dużo do myślenia, że e, takie motocykle sportowe można używać w inny sposób. In the early days of making street bike films, we could... We could uh, we could do like a, a hit and run midnight. We strike at midnight street ride and go blazing through a city. And the cops, the cops really, they didn't really know what they were looking at. They didn't know like is this illegal? What is it? So you know we got away with a lot early on in the early days of stump bike riding. We would you know I would go from city to city while I was making segments for 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 these films, and we would just we would just kill it. We would go blazing through town, whether it's, whether it was Times Square or, you know, Worcester, Mass, Cuba, wherever. Um, but as time went on, you know, the, the cops got hip to it. I got this guy and his brother and his Nissan Pathfinder. Once I picked him up at the, the restaurant in Newark, he's like, all right, we gotta go this way. He's yelling out the window with a camera in his hand, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. I'm like, this dude is fucking out of his mind. And that's how I met Drew Stone. Right now, he's probably saying you little shit. You saw me there. No, here we are in fucking Staten Island. We haven't even got off goddamn Jump Street and the fucking cops jumped on us, so. 12 points last summer he got. We were on the highway on the BQE wheeling. The cop pulled them over, had a video camera in the, in the uh, car. He got one out. Sit, put him in the back of the car and play the tape for him. So is that you? He said, yeah. Locked him up and took the bike. Yeah, Drew Stone, he's a good dude, man. He uh, definitely an innovator, not an imitator, as he likes to say. Um, you heard me reference the urban videos. Um, they just killed it back then, man. They got us on MTV and, and did it real big. And, and, you know, we've been back and forth on a few issues and stuff like that, but one of the most memorable things I did was because of Drew Stone and uh, Tony D basically did these shows in Guantanamo Bay over Cuba. And uh, not too many Americans have been over there. And it was a real, real blessing to be able to go over there and, and have fun. And it, it's something I'll never forget. So got to show love to Tony and Drew for that, you know, and uh, Teach and Ray Ray and the, the XFR guys and everybody that was over there, man. Joe Vert, we just had a great time. This is the stuff from Drew Stone. It's done, I'm beginning to buy DVDs, then I see a lot of stuff and good vibes, good music. Big bikes, war wohl AC Farias video, a really low budget video. But I have it forwards and rückwärts 100 Mal angeschaut. And um, erst später kam it then irgendwelche amerikanischen Videos. Była to amerykańska produkcja Drew Stone'a z Tonem D w roli głównej. Był to dodatek do jakiejś polskiej gazety motocyklowej. Bardzo fajnie chłopaki jeździli, spodobało mi się to, po czym zacząłem przerabiać swój motocykl i uczyć się trików. I mean, it's bad enough to get booted in your own town, or whatever, especially coming from New Jersey, New York area. But damn, when you get bootleg in, in Poland, damn, bootleg copies, yo. Look at that. Bootleg copies, 20D freestyle film here. Right? Holy shit. They bootleg me, yo. That's just industry, man. That's just, that's just industry. I like the old school videos when they were bikes that looked like they came off the showroom floor and look like they hadn't been touched or done anything different to, and they're out there wheeling on the streets. The first stunt film I ever saw was Thrall Trauma 1, and it was a big movie for me because I, I grew up in Vancouver, and that's where I started learning how to ride, and all the riders that were in that movie, I knew. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool to see them, you know, killing the streets and all that stuff. 
The first time video I ever saw was definitely the Star Boys. That's what got me into riding. I think that's what got, I mean, there was a few other groups out there, but well over half, the 50% of the people who got into stunt running got into stunt running through the Star Boys. You know, no, I bought two at the same time. I bought Las Vegas Extremes one and Star Boys two and a half still furred out. Those were my first two. And they're really different because if you have seen both the videos, which you should have, because first of all, Las Vegas Extreme, Extremes one is a fantastic video. Say what you want about Polly, but Polly made some really cool videos back in the day and he's a funny guy. Um, completely different, you know, the Star Boys video is real kind of homemade. Uh, looks like it was made between two VHS machines, you know, it's not nearly the production quality that the Las Vegas Extremes ones uh, were made, nor did it have the same feel. Las Vegas Extremes are having fun, uh, Starboys are, are a bunch of badass guys riding around being badass, and they, you know, both had their place. Who the fuck is Drew Stone? Who the fuck are the Starboys? The only video I've ever watched and anybody should ever watch is the Ghost Rider. There was this one group of guys that got together and did a bunch of like wheelies down the freeway and later they became known for long freeway wheelies. Then Las Vegas Extremes film came out and had like 30, 40 different stunts on it and became known for stunts. Uh, after that, we put another film out that introduced a girl doing it, thus we became known for hot chicks and motorcycle stunts. I think it was uh, the Star Boys, one of the, I can't remember which one, but yeah, I saw them and saw them doing wheelies down the freeway and I was like, oh my God, you know, I couldn't believe it. Back then, I guess the bikes I was riding didn't have enough power to, to clutch it up in third gear, you know? You'd have to start out at 10 miles an hour, so seeing them, that was pretty impressed. Well, there was no DVDs. Um, the first stunt footage that inspired us to make the first stunt, American stunt DVD, was uh, just some stuff that was over overseas. And um, it was some stuff on Fast Bike uh, Magazine put out a couple uh, VHS tapes way back in the late 90s and they just had a few clips on those videos of um, some idiot over there what was his name Gary Rothwell I know him well he's not an idiot but um, when we when we ended up going over there and performing and stuff we had some words with each other and whatever just I respect the man for what he did back then but um, you know a lot of the uh, the English English stunt writers didn't get what we were doing and didn't understand why uh, we were actually pulling a lot more pussy than they were when we would be uh, at a show. So they took a disliking to the Star Boys. The first videos of Kyle Wood with the first ralenti at the time when the riders were going to the cul of the moto, it was a big thing. It was like, it's not possible to do that. It's incredible. LVX and Get On Up was one of the first two DVDs I've ever seen. And, uh, Man, I was watching it and it looked like fun. You know, back then it was all wheelie stuff and freeway stuff as far as stunt DVDs went. And uh, I was like, wow, I'm gonna get a street bike and do some wheelies on the freeway. So next thing I did was got a street bike and did some wheelies on the freeway. LVX one, Las Vegas Extremes part one, 1998, I think it was the year, 99. And uh, I don't, it was just awesome. It was like, maybe it's because I just, just started riding. I only been riding for like a week or two. Like it was, I was still having a hard time figuring out the clutch. You know, getting worried about man. Maybe I shouldn't try to pull out right now because that car is coming. If I stall, you know, think, you know what I mean? Like, clutch, brake, shifting. What? Oh, okay, green light means neutral. Like you, everything is new and exciting to see these people doing what they're doing on their bikes. It just it looked like magic. Back in like '98, '99 was Wink. Wink had these real low budget. VHS tapes that were selling in the streets out here in New York, and he was just killing the streets, you know? Rocking that, that 92 square back 1100, just killing the streets out there. Hitting the signal lights when he's switching lanes. I mean, that right there, between that and, and the Banshee footage he used to have in the streets, that right there was what got me started riding. I met Drew Stone, and when I met Drew, we started, we, you know, we hung out with him and he was cool. We took him to events and went to different places and stuff like that. And uh, I ended up starting to get involved with like the Urban Street Bike Warriors films. Going to France, baby. It's most definitely on. Drew Stone, Tony D Freestyle. We're going to Burns Day. <laughs> Yeah.
I put out 12 o'clock, which was a really New York based film. And at a certain point, I went to a competition, me and Tony D. Freestyle, we, we, went, we went out to Oklahoma and uh, it was a, a competition out there. And out there, it seemed like it was the watershed moment of, of stunt bike riding. It seemed like every crew from America trekked across the country to be at this event. And I started meeting people and everyone knew who I was and everybody knew 12 o'clock and people were freaked out that I was there and all kinds of people were telling me how much 12 o'clock has influenced them and how they love the film. I remember thinking, I, I got on the phone to my brother and I said, hey, you know, I'm out here in Oklahoma and I got news for you. I think there's another film to make here because what we thought was just predominantly something that was happening in New York is now spreading out across America. I hate the fact that one day I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this anymore. That's why I hate it. Like a fool in the city that never sleeps, I lie awake alone. How long, too long, till the sun breaks through these darkened skies? Bring it back, bring it back to the way they were before. is getting clearer and yet the memories fade it seems even lonesome towns have crowds just pour me another cup how long too long till the sun breaks through these darkened skies bring it back bring it back to the way Ask. I don't know, it's 
too much, too much, too much to ask. And I don't know, I know it's too much, too much to ask. Ultimate goal as a stunt rider constantly changes. We've been in the industry from the start. Um, we pretty much uh, started the U.S. wave of stunt riding. Um, you know, we took what we saw that was being done on the tracks and what was being done on bikes over in England, and we Americanized it. We took it and totally flipped it around and blew up the scene with crazy FTP video. My goal set forth when I first started was just that I want to be famous. I want to be known throughout the stunt game. And I honestly, not to have a big head or anything, I'm, I'm glad to say that people can always remember the name Bulo. And you know what I'm saying? If it's synonymous with the streets, then so be it. I don't care that it's, you know, oh, he's the guy who only rides the streets, yada, yada. You know, I ride the competitions. I go to XDL. I go to Stunt Wars when it first came out. I mean, I was there, you know. I like competitions as much as I do like... Uh, uh, street riding, you know, the promoters at competitions need to take care of the riders a little more. I think the payouts need to be a little bit bigger. I need to think that, you know, the riders are out there trying to kill themselves for something and they're barely getting the money that can fix their bike, you know. That's where I'm, I'm hoping it'll go, is to get more money for people. If XDL doesn't do what the hell they say they're going to be doing this year, and if we do not go to X Games in 2011, we're never going to. Sad reality, and to all those riders who are my friends who've been paying their dues, who have been traveling and spending their, their livelihoods trying to be there, who aren't making sponsorship dollars, who aren't being able to financially survive off of it. If we do not go X Games this year, it's over. The only chance we're going to have is to get a circus sideshow. That's it. That's what stunt running will ever be. You know, that's a tough question because once you reach the top, I mean, uh, there isn't really anywhere to go. You just basically have to fucking fight off all the people trying to take your spot. So really, it's more like a matter of maintenance at this point because I'm at the top. There isn't really anywhere for me to go but just, you know, defend my seat on the street. You know? Hát szeretnék minél, minél több eredményt elérni a Stunt Ridingban. Én úgy gondolom, hogy, hogy ehhez elég jó úton járok. Szeretnék még, még legalább egy, egy jó pár évet végig, végig versenyezni, elindulni minél, minél nevesebb versenyeken, és hát összemérni az erőmet a, a, a többi, többi Stunt Riding versenyzővel. To, czego chciałbym dojść, no chciałbym jak najdłużej trwać w tym sporcie i dalej się rozwijać. Chciałbym pozyskiwać oczywiście nowych sponsorów, osiągać dobre wyniki w zawodach, to jest dla mnie też bardzo ważne, no i sprawia mi to dużą przyjemność po prostu. Startowanie z czołowymi stunterami i staranie się być jak, jak, jak najlepszym. Oczywiście nie jest łatwo, no bo wiadomo, jest bardzo dużo profesjonalnych zawodników, takich jak Chris Pfeiffer. Mein Ziel ist es, mich immer weiter zu verbessern und Spaß zu haben dabei. Training in unserem Sport ist kein, kein Muss, sondern ich freue mich darauf, Motorradfahren zu gehen und neue Sachen auszuprobieren. Ja, diese Progression, der Fortschritt, das ist es, was mich so fasziniert an dem Sport. Mein Ziel in der Stunt, für den Moment, ist es einfach nur für mich, zu nehmen, mit meinen Freunden Ceux qui, ceux qui roulent autant que ceux qui ne roulent pas. Après, si j'ai possibilité de faire des petites démonstrations, des petits shows, des petites choses comme ça, c'est avec grand plaisir. Et mon vrai but, honnêtement, ce serait, comme je le dis depuis tout à l'heure, c'est de réunir toutes les femmes et de pouvoir faire au moins un show par an où on est toutes ensemble et vraiment pas de compétition, rien, où on est à fond dans le délire. Euh, mon ambition, bah, avant tout, c'est de me faire plaisir. Hein. C'est pour ça que je roule. Après, je ne suis, suis pas un compétiteur. Bien que j'aime bien la compétition, mais bon. Quand je vais en compétition, c'est uniquement pour le fun, c'est pas pour essayer de faire la première place. Même si ça me dérange pas si j'y arrive. Après, voilà, uniquement du fun, prendre plaisir, prendre plaisir à rouler. I've achieved far beyond what I thought was possible. I remember saying it back in the day, I just want free parts. Man, if I can just ride for free, then that'll be everything. I'll stop. If I can just ride for free, it's all I ever want. Now I get paid more money than I ever thought to ride my motorcycle, the same as I was doing 10 years ago. It's the same thing. Same thing as I was doing five years ago. I'm doing the exact same thing, except now I get paid a bunch more money. And so, it works for me. You know, it's to just stay uh, healthy. <laughs> you gotta go to work, man. But uh, just keep on innovating new tricks, you know, nothing major. 
Um, I'm not a daredevil. I gotta, you know, I can't be, I can't, I can't be breaking limbs and stuff right now. So, you know, just innovating small little tricks, you know, having fun. Alors mon but euh, dans le stun, c'est bah, déjà d'une avant tout rester les pieds sur terre. Ça c'est une des choses les plus importantes. Euh, ne pas prendre la grosse tête et euh, bien sûr prendre du plaisir, rencontrer du monde, faire plaisir aux gens avec qui on fait des spectacles, donc les spectateurs. Et puis euh, bah, bien sûr euh, faire que mes sponsors euh, m'aident encore plus et que je les représente au maximum. Et euh, la majorité du temps quand même c'est vraiment voilà, me faire plaisir avec mes copains, me faire plaisir tout seul et euh, rouler, 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 que ce soit en stunt ou dans n'importe quelle discipline. I continue to do it every night because I just have that urge. Oh, I gotta get better, I gotta do this, I gotta straighten out my leg, I gotta, you know, push a little bit harder. If, if somebody else can do it, why can't I do it? That's all it is, is practice, blood, sweat and tears, that's all it is. It's not about how good you are on your best day, it's about how great you are on your worst day. Because it always works out that way where when you're having a bad day, that's when you have to perform and, and make it count the most. I think I'm just going to start riding for fun again. That's what got me into it and that's what I enjoyed about the sport so much and it changed a lot when I tried going super pro and I like it more underground sometimes. Just want to have fun. But dans le stunt, c'est d'essayer de toujours dépasser un peu ses limites, repousser toujours au plus haut possible, monter monter le plus haut sur sa moto, faire les plus grosses figures on a en tête, voilà. je pense dans ce stunt, après il n'y a, a pas vraiment de but, si c'est de se faire plaisir, de s'éclater. Je ne sais pas, juste pour être aussi bon que je peux et essayer de garder avec certains de ces gars qui sont juste like, ridiculous ici sur les streets, comme like, Turtle, juste never ever putting wheelies down, c'est juste crazy. Um, you know, I'd like to do good at contests if I can, but the stuff that people are doing these days are just out of control. Um, but pretty much just keep on rocking how I am and just wherever it takes me, it takes me, so. Well, I try to make a, make a living from that. That's the big goal, you know? And also participate in competition and promote the sporting. You know, my career, my professional career, always promote the right way to ride, you know? Ride in the dead end streets, parking place, respect the rules in the, in the road, you know? Ride in the speed limits and not make, take a risk for the, the people in the road, you know? Because yeah, it's okay if you crash, but sometimes you're involved and people like legal riding, some people have family in a car, then you crash your bike in, into a car. That's the bad thing, you know? You need to respect. If you go in a spot, all the people there like take the risk, but in the roads, many people there don't like to have a risk, don't like to see bikes fast and dangerous.
Stunt Riding ist viel mehr für mich als ein Sport. Stunt Riding ist Lifestyle und äh, ich meine, ich bin Profi seit so vielen Jahren und äh, alles dreht sich um Stunt Riding. Den ganzen Tag denke ich an Stunt Riding, lebe Stunt Riding und äh, ja, es ist äh, viel mehr als ein Job, es ist einfach eine Leidenschaft. No, od kiedy zacząłem jeździć na motocyklu, tak troszeczkę bardziej ekstremalnie, no wiele się zmieniło, gdyż praktycznie wszystko jest pod to podporządkowane. Wszystkie jakieś wyjazdy, na pierwszym miejscu jest zawsze motor. No. Odbiło się to parę razy na moim jakimś tam życiu, prawda, osobistym, no ale to jest silniejsze po prostu od człowieka. Pretty much I think about stunt riding all the time. I mean, it's, it's in my blood, you know, right now, and it'll probably always be in my blood until, you know, the day I die. It's, it's, it'll always be in my mind, and it, it's always going to affect my life either way, you know. Hát az életem úgy vált, olyan, olyan formátumban változott meg, hogy nagyon sokat utazok azóta, nagyon sok fellépésem van, és uh, hát alapjávéve én erre tettem fel az életemet, és, és, és folyamatosan ezt, ezt, ezt a sportot csinálom. There's a lot of room in my heart and there's a lot of space taken up in my heart with the sport of freestyle and the lifestyle that surrounds it. Um, and it's really difficult for me to, to just walk away, walk away cold. But um, in life sometimes you got to do things like that in order to, to move forward. Like you wake up in the morning and you think I want to do a wheelie. I want to do a wheelie to work. You start wearing your suit, you get on your bike in the morning and suddenly instead of just like driving in, in your car? No! You're doing a wheelie to work! It's insane! It just, um, you start doing comps and then you start preparing for comps. You start dedicating, instead of that one hour that you're doing three times a week, you start doing four hours every single night because you just want to progress. You want to get better. I was very invested in it. Moi, en fait, avec tout le, tous les collègues, tout le team, euh, parce qu'en fait, on a ouvert un magasin qui est dédié aux deux roues, mais aussi on fait de la fabrication de pièces. Donc en fait, on, on fait vraiment de la création de, de pièces et on, on s'investit au niveau du travail et au niveau de la passion. C'est-à-dire qu'on passe les week-ends sur le spot à rouler et on passe une partie de la semaine en fait à créer, et à vivre, à regarder des vidéos, à discuter avec des amis. Dire que c'est ma vie, c'est du stunt et la famille. C'est voilà, c'est presque 50-50. So I got cameras, I got linked up with people that could help me, got on the street, started doing some filming and made sure stunt riding stayed a part of my life even though it grew so much of the sport that it progressed past my level of skills. But you can still find me on the streets, you know, any given day, bringing back my supermoto or any bike I can get onto, still having fun any way I can. Uh, L'impact qu'a le stunt dans, dans ma vie? Uh, en fait, uh, je vis pour le stunt, je vis par rapport au stunt, je me lève le matin par rapport au stunt. Uh, en fait, uh, le stunt, c'est ma vie, en fait. Uh, so the impact it's had on my life is it's been my therapy, you know, like you're a little stressed out about something, you go for a ride, you know, your girl upset you, you go for a ride, you know, you're not really sure what to do about the, the bills, you go for a ride, everything will be okay. <laughs> Actually, bill day was the day I couldn't ride, believe it or not, like, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but, um, uh, you go from riding your motorcycles for fun, which is great. You go out with your buddies, you ride bikes. Uh, in our case, we were filming, so it was all about tapes and batteries. Is the batteries charged? Do you have an extra tape on you? And yada yada. And then one day, a dream come true. You're riding motorcycles for a living. Now, you get paid to ride the bike, and you think this is the greatest thing in the world. And it is. It certainly is. I definitely didn't want to go get a job. But now that it's a job that you got to ride, you can't ride without the cameras. You can't go out there and ride and not have the cameras rolling because what if something happens? What if you get some really cool stuff going on? Or what if a crash happens? You need that on film because that's your job. If you're really lucky, it might come full circle to where you could ride for fun again and still get paid. Ah, L'impact du stun dans ma vie, euh, ça a changé beaucoup de choses. Ça a permis de rencontrer des gens géniaux, une ambiance euh, qui me correspond complètement. Ça donne même parfois envie de quitter son travail, mais euh, c'est que ça, ça fait rentrer dans un monde euh, complètement différent des autres sports. Ça a tout changé. It cost me a relationship with somebody who I was very serious with. I left my job that I planned on never leaving. I left that and I moved 3,000 miles across the country to pursue it. 
So it's had a pretty, uh, pretty good, big impact on my life. And you know, along those lines, it's also taught me a lot about myself, and it's given me the courage and the, uh, the fortitude to to get out there and, and chance it and go for it. So. You know, I'm still the same person, but it's definitely opened up a lot of doors for me and uh, allowed me to see the world, you know. So I'll never have any regrets. As, as many heartaches as it's caused me, in the end, each one of those heartaches has led to something even greater. So I'm very appreciative. Uh, I did, I've uh, appris to have confidence in me. I've been defouled, I've been evaded a little bit when I have problems or something. I've been liberated. I'm in another world. Yeah, it's taken over pretty much every aspect of my life. I own a truck because I truck my bike in every day. It's a dually because I need to tow a trailer for me and my friends. You know, my garage is owned by the bikes. I don't own anything that's not motorcycle related. I don't do anything that's not motorcycle related. And uh, I don't think that even stunt riding is the main focus of it. I really like motorcycles, so. I can't picture myself without some sort of bike, whether it's a 50 or a dirt bike or, or a street bike, it doesn't really matter. It just if, as long as I have a bike, I'm happy, so that's all that really matters. It's defined who I am and everything I do for the last 10 years. You know, I, I started in my 20s being a body piercer and ended up ending my 20s being a professional motorcycle stunt rider, which, I mean, it's defined me. It's, it's given me all the opportunities that I, I never would have had otherwise from traveling to, to everything. All those experiences in the last eight plus years turn you into who you are. So I mean, it's, it's been, I can't even describe how impactful stunt riding has truly been in my life. Stunt riding is about as much of a sport as the ultimate frisbee. The only difference is, is that the frisbee players know they're a bunch of fucking homos. It's, it's amazing that before I really started all this, I had never really traveled or been on a plane and, and things like that. And, uh, now I've been around the world with this and you know I've got friends in different countries and uh, you know friends all across the US and just having fun and trying to make some money at the same time and you know hopefully make a dent in a in a sport and, and leave my impression on it. When is it gonna stop? When am I gonna what day am I gonna go and say I don't wanna ride that bike today? You know and what is going to fill that void? I, I worry about that. My real stand up. And if you slay, what up? Yeah, let's bring this mad face back, man. Bro, star in this bitch. Long chain. Yeah. Yo, Sticky, what up? Yeah, yeah, what's good, nigga? Hundred mad niggas with guns. Yeah. Hundred mad niggas yeah. with guns. Okay, let's set the tone off correct. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it 9 4 style. We throwing up shit like hardcore. Like we back in 9 4. It's Judgment Night. These are raps last days. And you say, bring it back to mad days. Slot times. It's for your cowards to drop down. Posted on the block like stop signs. How could you stop crime? When I listen to the clip, we pop nines. My boy got hotlines. Like phone numbers for fun to waste. It's beef like fate, you get done away. When I see my PO, only time I put my gun away. Gunplay, murder for fun. At least one a day. Shots in your Teflon. Pull up with vest on. I feel 17 to get like Zach Efron. Running Mac click like Coke, you get stepped on. Battle me a new website or be deaf calm. Talks caps, smarty and talk back, the heart of the smack, drop slam the gym to do it all out bro. So I toss my best friend through a gym rock bar. When hip hop falls, you find me dying in a hearse, screaming I'm not watered down, so I'm dying of thirst. Barely fall off a roof before I stop hawking truth. I'd rather stick and blow my fucking head off in this food. My last truth through whack dudes and bench crews. These pack dudes stack 30 years of plastic rap tunes. A hundred man truth. Like we back in 9-4 It's 
Least rewarding is tearing your bike up or tearing yourself up and not getting paid for it. That's about the worst. Probably not being being paid in a money sense, simply because this is the type of sport that requires money, and it requires you to stay healthy. It requires you know the doctor when it's time. It requires a new bike when it's time. Um, and the most difficult part about it was, you know, sometimes uh, putting gas in the tank to go training, you know, and keeping fresh tires on the bike and and all because you're only as good as the equipment you're on. I don't like my 27 broken bones. I don't like my, my body full of metal. <laughs> Getting old and yeah, no, it's, uh, it sucks a little bit. I don't regret anything. I, you can't have regrets, man. I, uh, no, I, love, I love riding. Crashing, you know, every once in a while you have a really good crash and it puts you out. It's no good, it's no fun. So that, that really sucks about stunt riding. Running from the police on motorcycles is probably not a really good idea, but it sure is a lot of fun. Now that you can charge a stunt guy 88 bucks an hour to work on their bike, and the other side of the coin is they're the ones that destroy their bikes. You also lose your time working on their stuff for free, and you can't work on other customers' stuff, so it's kind of a hard thing. It's like you can't charge your family. I just want people to look at me and say, yeah, that kid was sick on a bike. And I think that I've accomplished that goal. So I, I get the most out of just, just entertaining people and people being appreciative of what I am able to do on a motorcycle. And uh, it, makes, you know, it makes you feel good because it's not about the money. It's, it's, it's about the money, but it's really not. The most difficult part is probably just like the business aspect of it, you know. Um, when you first get into it, you're not, you don't get into it for the business part of it. You know, that's not what interests you. You know, if that's what interests you, you'd be doing something in business rather than stunt riding. You know, so just trying to mix the two together and being, uh, being good at both of them is the hard part. <sighs> so many things I like about riding. I mean, if you had asked me that question eight years ago, I would say, you know, they're fast, it's cheap, chicks dig it. If you asked me that question five years ago, you're like, man, it's a new frontier. I'm trying to push it and going somewhere different. You ask me that question nowadays, it's still a little bit of that, but it's also like, man, I like that it's made me who I am. I like that it, it helps me pay my bills. I like that it allows me to continue to do what I do. For me, the meilleure part of stunt is to be able to se rassembler tous ensemble certain weekends dans différentes parties de la France et pouvoir profiter d'être tous ensemble et de, de partager la même passion sans, sans conflit, sans prise de tête, sans compétition et tout ce qui, qui s'ensuit. Just the funnest part, just being in the parking lot and you know, coming up with new stuff, new tricks that just split one of your friend's wigs and you just keep doing it over and over again and rubbing it in, you know, it's, it's better, 
it's a better feeling when your friends that know how hard or how difficult the tricks are that give you props versus like people, you know, random people in the crowd or whatever because they might not fully understand. So when you get the respect of your peers or whatever, that, you know, that means a lot. Crowd pleasing. I like to get out on a bike and just go full throttle and, and just get the crowd pleased. I stunt for other people, you know, I don't just stunt for judges or for competition wise. I like to just get the reaction out of people. That's why I stunt. If you love something and you commit yourself to something and you put in the work, that it's rewarding no matter what happens, whether you're crashing, whether you're breaking parts, whether you're breaking body parts. It's just something that you love and you just work towards. You accept it as a consequence of what you do. You know, it's interesting because um, my family isn't accepting of stunt riding at all. And um, most of the time, honestly, I hope they never see this, but I lie about where I am and what I'm doing. Opportunities kept coming along the way. That was the most rewarding part because it, it felt like there was always a purpose and it felt like there was always um, a reason why I was given these opportunities. And at that point, that's what made it seem like it was always making sense. And looking back at it now, I feel like that was the best that, was the best that came out of it was you know, always having um, some door opening and keep going forward in the career. Yeah, when I get on my bike, it's to perform. And if the, if, it, if the ground is cold, my tires are cold, you know, like I gotta take it easy. And uh, you know, I don't really know how to do that. So it takes a while for it to heat up and then your body's cold and then, you know, that you stop, the tires are cold again. Like the, the thing I dislike most about riding is riding in the cold. You know, at some points in the year, I'm driving for four or five days with a 40 foot rig, getting there, setting up, doing a bike night ride, doing three or four shows the next day. And if it's a two-day show, it's two days of that. If it's, you know, if it's not, and it's tearing down for a day and driving four or five more days to the next show, and I'm just gone months at a time. And that's definitely the hardest part. And uh, like anything else in your life, even if you enjoy it once it becomes a job, it's exactly that. It's a job. My father sat me down a couple of weeks ago. We had uh, lunch, and he said, you know, if you quit stunt riding, I'll buy you a house. And I looked him dead in the eye, and I said, Dad, it's not going to happen. And then he looked back at me and he said, I know because you're my daughter. But I just don't know what I'd do if I didn't stunt. If I didn't stunt, it's a really, it's a screwed up question. Like what would you be doing if you didn't film? God knows, man. I was raised in the Bronx. So much illegal stuff going around. Could I either been arrested? Could I be locked up right now? Could I be dead? God knows, man. Honestly, I wouldn't even know. I'd probably be a successful business owner, which I already am now, or I would have continued to do dirt and probably got locked up again. So, yes, I said again. If I wasn't a stunt rider, I'd be uh, sitting behind bars and be in jail, probably. Um, but honestly, I'd be a bank robber. Oh, ha nem nem motoroznék, nem nem üzném ezt a stunt riding sportot, akkor én úgy gondolom, hogy hogy mindenféleképpen motoroznék, de de talán valami más más dologgal foglalkozni. Mi lehet, hogy elmenni jetski versenyzőnek, vagy vagy akár el tudom így az esőre esőre való tekintettel. Gondolom, hogy motorokkal foglalkozni, motorokat szerelnék, vagy vagy vagy, vagy bármi. <laughs> ich glaube, wenn ich kein stunt rider wäre, wäre vielleicht Musiker, zumindest wäre das ein Traum. Sicherlich kein Tänzer, aber Musiker. <lacht> If I didn't stunt ride, what else would I be doing? Uh, I honestly don't know. I don't really have, pretty much stunt riding is, is what I do. That's, that's my hobbies. Other than that, I pretty much uh, spend a lot of time working and uh, try and spend as much time when I'm not doing either one of those sleeping. You know, doing track days in my car, things like that. I mean, I've always loved cars. You know, and sport bikes or motorcycles in general just seem to be an easier way to, you know, to do something big or, you know, with, with cars it's more about the, the car and the motor than it is so much a driver versus motorcycles. It's all about the rider, so it just gave you a, an easier avenue to express your craziness, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I would, something with talking, I like to talk, something with uh, maybe sales. Uh, marketing, something I, I could see myself doing any number of those things, like trying to trying to uh, get attention. I, I really don't know. I don't know. I, 
when I hear people whine about their like injuries and stuff, you know, if they break like bones and snap them in half or break a neck or something, that's something like to whine about. But like, like twisting a wrist or like, you know, like spraining an ankle or like getting a little gouge on your elbow. No, like get back on the bike and ride straight up. Done deal. Anymore, there's no money in, in videos. Maybe back in 2005, yeah, like there was, you could exploit a rider if you took advantage of him and, you know, but realistically, if you're, I've done it before. If you're riding there and somebody's with a camera, like I've been practicing before and I didn't want to have the guy shooting me that day because I just didn't feel like having my, my daily practice documented. I've asked the guy, hey, you know, can you not shoot me today? I'm just practicing some stuff and I want to spend seven hours trying the same trick and I don't want it to be taped for the entire seven hours. And it's easy to do that. It's stupid to get angry at somebody post the fact. Like, hey, why'd you tape me all day? I saw you taping me, why'd you tape me? That's stupid. Um, and we need that type of publicity now because there's no money in DVDs. So the people that are out there making DVDs, you know, they're, I think if they're lucky, they're breaking even on their efforts. So we need more people that, that we can exploit as writers. <laughs> Come to my city if you're gonna make a good DVD. And, I'll hang out with you for a couple of weeks and you can shoot every day. I don't care um, because it's a lot of hard work and I've been on the other side of the camera and sitting in front of an editing studio for hours on end and getting nothing out of it. That's, that's at times as much work as writing for sure. I don't think stunt DVDs or anything like that exploit writers really. I mean, why would it? Uh, if anything, it 
you know, it brings the sport to a higher level, it gets us out there more. I, th I think if we were dealing with, you know, riders having six million dollar contracts, then it'd be a whole different story. But you know, it's not even to that point yet. So, it's for, well, maybe Britain. Hey, Britain. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. To grab people's footage. And, and swipe a bunch of people's shit just to dump out another film while things were hot. That just was just not the way I did things. And, you know, the more motherfuckers acted like that, you know, it really made my films rise to the top, man. Because those fucking people couldn't direct their way out of a wet paper bag. You know, we took care in our films and we focused on our films. It wasn't, you know, we were proud of our films. Our films meant something, you know. It wasn't just get this shit out so we can make some money or do this or do that. So, you know, the more fucking clowns that ran around and did stupid shit like that, you know, really just made us look better in the long run. Everybody says they want to put you in a video and then you go, hey, all right, I'll be in the video. Uh, and then you're waiting for some videos, you know. It's all about you have the control. You can edit and put who you want in a video. But if I honestly believe if you're in a video, you deserve to get something out of it, you know. When the, when the game first started, you know, videos were the only way to, that we could make our money. There was really no other way. Nobody really meant doing any shows or anything, so. You know, the videos were the, the main source of income, so it was, it was a bigger deal. You know, like when I'd go to the spot, you wouldn't want somebody filming you because you thought they were going to go make a video. Like when you go to the stunt spot, if somebody else is filming, you'd be like, you know, tell them to shut their camera off. But these days, I mean, it's just with YouTube and everybody's got a video camera on their cell phone. It just, you can't really, you know, can't really uh, do anything about it, you know. Um, as the videos became popular, a couple of producers, uh, you know, sort of picked up on it and said, ooh, you know, this is looking real popular, we can make some money here. And they came out and started filming a bunch of the guys riding. And a bunch of these guys riding didn't have any, uh, any ability to produce their own video, so this was giving them an opportunity to get their name and face on a video on the shelf. So they would ride for them for free, of course. And the producers didn't ride motorcycles, but they were looking to exploit the talent and make a dollar. I think the reason that whole mentality comes up from a lot of the rider side is because a lot of riders or any athlete from any action sport video, uh, up and coming, especially athletes, you know, they, they're struggling and they see people with cameras following it and they, they, it's easy for them to see, to get this mentality, think of the other people are you know, taking advantage of them or whatnot, but not seeing the bigger picture that those people are actually helping them more in the end. But. I think videos are good for the whole scene and also for the fighters. Um, es kann uns nur helfen, eine breite Öffentlichkeit zu erreichen. Ähm, allerdings ist das Problem, dass die meisten Stunt-Videos eigentlich nur innerhalb der Szene geschaut werden. Stunter schauen Stunter-Videos. Und es wäre wichtig, eine breitere, ähm, ein breiteres Publikum zu erreichen. Aber ich glaube, generell sind, sind Videos gut. In der Vergangenheit gab es schlechte Beispiele mit viel Street-Riding und ähm, Dinge, die mir nicht gefallen haben, wo, wo die Leute gesagt haben, dass Stunter sind, sind verrückt und sind gefährlich. Aber ich glaube, auch die Videos werden insgesamt immer sportlicher und Stunt-Videos sind, sind gut für die Szene. It's your decision. You say yes or no. In the past, we haven't worked with a lot of producers because I felt like these producers were indeed causing more harm than good in the stunt industry. What a lot of people have got to realize is we've been in the industry from the start. So we've seen thousands of people come and go. And we've seen a lot of money come and go. And we've seen you know a lot of producers come in. And a lot of people, not just in production, but just a lot of people in general, wherever you see a big fluctuation of money coming into a situation, you're gonna have a bunch of fucking scabs coming in trying to rip people off, trying to extort, trying to make a quick dollar. And that's what a tons of producers did in this industry. And what do they do? They reached out to these writers and said, oh, here, here, you know, I wanna use your footage, I wanna do this. They got all this free footage. And basically, you know, some of them maybe were promised some cash on the back end, but most of them did it just, you know, uh, did it to themselves. So, you know, that's a total, total, uh, um, the question is, you know, you got to take responsibility for your actions. So all these sorry ass stunt riders that were complaining that they got ripped off or, you know, they got used and abused, you did it to yourself. You should have made the right decision from the start, sit back, and I know sometimes it's easy to get caught up in somebody's bullshit, but, uh, you know, first time, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll give you some slack. The second time, just need to tell the person to fuck off. My mind actually stops working a thousand miles an hour and I can actually just relax and not have to think so much about 
bills I got to pay, laundry I got to do, traveling you got to do, you know, fix the transmission on that or fix this or fix that or whatever. You just kind of focus on doing what you do and just kind of flowing, you know what I mean? What goes through my mind when I get on my bike? I love it, man. That's, that's it. I love it. Puts a smile on my face. It's freedom. It's freedom. The only thing I think of when I get on the bike is how much pussy I'm gonna get when I ride down the main drag of your town. <laughs> There's times I'm sitting on the bike at a light and my foot's shaking and I'm like, come on, come on, I gotta, come on, come on. Ah! Well, that's part of it. You don't think about anything else except, you know, whatever trick you're trying and so all your other worries and problems just kind of go away. First thing I think about when I get on the bike is where I'm gonna go, who I'm gonna piss off and how I'm gonna get out of the high-speed chase when it's on. It has to be calculated. You have to, the minute that cop flicks his lights on, you have to calculate which route you're gonna go and, and expect that every light's gonna be red and there's a pedestrian on every sidewalk. It's extremely calculated. That's what makes it fun. Cops keep on messing with me and keep on harassing me when I'm not doing anything wrong. I will just take the plate off my bike and I will put a black helmet and a black jacket on and you will never, ever catch me. Usually nothing. Nothing goes through my mind when I ride. I daydream a lot. I. You know, if I if I had a good song in my head, it sticks in my head. If I had seen some tricks that I want to, you know, attempt, that goes through my head. If I get mad at my bike, that stays there for a long time. <sighs> that sucks. I hate getting angry at it. Um, lately, we've been not speaking very well. Kind of a bitch. I have to ask you or tell you that I have a lot of bikes, and I got a lot of different bikes that serve different purposes. So. Um, depending on what bike I'm jumping on and depending on when I'm jumping on my bike determines what's going through my mind. What kind of crazy trick can I lay down today? What else will I have been working on from the week before? It depends on the event too. You know, if it's cold out, if it's sunny out, how many spectators are there. It also depends on, you know, what kind of crowd. You got some hot females there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna show off to the fullest. You're doing a trick. It takes all your, all your concentration to what you're doing. You're not thinking about the fight you had at home where you would work the next day, you're in the moment. Not too much, you know. It's, uh, it's a big stress reliever and uh, it's also a creative outlet of mine that I use, you know. So uh, I just go out and get in my zone and, and ride. Well, when I want to get in a motorcycle, that's pretty much, it's all about the extreme, you know. I get out of control, I just can't ride normal, so I pretty much Stunting doesn't matter what it's at, the parking lot or freeways or streets or hard to keep the bike on two wheels. It's either the front wheel up in the air or the rear wheel up in the air. So besides riding the bike, which is really fun, I think uh, just the whole friendship experience and going to new places, meet new people, I think that that's the best part of it really. Met a lot of great people, traveled the world, um, did some films that I'm really proud of. And, uh, you know, when the day comes when they lower me into the ground in that box, you know, make sure there's a copy of Urban Street Bike Warriors in there. That I've probably met, well, actually, yeah, probably a few thousand people. Um, you know, and there's the good with the bad. I've had to hear a lot of stories about how their friend's better than me because he does freeway wheelies at 100 miles an hour, and I don't know anything about stunt riding from people that have approached me from a crowd. Um, I've had to hear how much people enjoy what I do and that motivates me immensely. Like if I get an email, for those of you who have sent emails to me that say, I like what you do uh, in any way, that's awesome. That, that day normally I go out and I have 10 times more drive than I did when I just woke up because I like riding every day. But when, it's, when somebody honestly takes their time out of their day to say they appreciate what you do, that's, that's awesome. Uh, I don't know, just being around everybody that likes to do the same kind of thing and just go out and kill streets or, you know, go ride a lot all day or, or whatever. It really doesn't matter to me as long as I'm with my friends and on my bike. I, I care less what we're doing, you know, just, just riding. It was about going and meeting people all over the world that, you know, we were developing this huge fan base. So when we would go somewhere, we weren't just going to, to do a job or to do a show. We would go two or three days early and stay there and ride the streets with all of our fans and just party with all of our fans and uh, then we'd go do our show and then we'd stay a couple more days to ride and just hang out. For the most part you, you realize that people are good. 
They're excited, they're, they're there to help you. If you get a blown tire on the side of the road, you'd be surprised how many people do stop to help you fix that tire or, or whatever it may be. So. I like the fans. I love the fans, you know. I love the, I love the people who ride too. I like the, uh, you know, it, we're, all, we're all just almost the same from the cameramen to the photographers to the, we're all a bunch of, you know, loose nuts, man. We're, we're all like, something's missing up there. And, and when I get around, it doesn't matter if you've seen a guy in four years or two years or one month. You know, we all go to a party. The problem is, is no one's gonna stop. No one says, hey, think about it. If we do this, we're gonna end up in jail. It's, let's go for it, yeah. So, one thing I like about riding is uh, it's always an adventure. Scott Herons for Ben Franklin's and Mason Puff put on spacesuits and went dancing before Tim produced more hits than Mickey Mantle before the golden era crumbled to bits and shambles I'd walk up to Jay tell him that he's the only hope to get your mind off that dot and start rocking the boat I go back to specific moments when my faith hurt most and I do my best to stop Nas from wearing fur coats I know Cube had more predators left in him so I'll stop him from dropping West Side Connection then tell Rod to keep tapping into the best of him get my feel when he was still Andre Benjamin. Yeah, I'd make loud pay for all those kung fu skits to make sure Rizzo keeps focused on that true whoop shit. If only they had helped the clan divide up royalties, maybe now they wouldn't have divided loyalties. Like the first time I heard Troy see, going back in the day brings such joy to me. What if I could go back, back to the day when every other town it wasn't wasting away? Maybe I'd just get a sentimental with age, but no behold, they go I could go back, back to the time when we used to pay attention to the words and the lines. Try to put the pieces back to this American pie and do my best to save the day the music died. Yo. And do my best to save the day yeah. the music died. If I could go died. back, I try to keep these rappers honest. Try to convince Easy to slap on a condom. Tell Dre, don't change it, thing keeps smoking chronic. Then I'd bet a couple grand on nuggets sold for Sonics. But I digress, lest I take away from the story. I'm like the boss, boss, take you back to the days of glory. We had the wings, man, but we forgot how to fly. Then we let go, like Stevie after Hotter Than July. Cause since Puff blew up, there's been no way out. Trend after trend, and now we're all played out. Remember staying up late for our Cindy, When Mob Deep had no pool party video. Remember when R&B and rap were two different things When the shine of mics and jewels were two different blings It used to be you gotta think before you write the words And it was city streets that made you not the white suburbs And I remember when those beats had you bobbing your head Closing your eyes to hear what common sense said Oh, what would I do if I could roll back years To when me against the world made me hold back tears Try to tell pun acceptance is the number one step Tell old dirty dog you should get some rest Yeah, I'd stop Pac from getting on that plane to Vegas But often the pain that kills us is the pain that makes us What if I could go back, back to the day When every other town it wasn't wasting away Maybe I'm just getting sentimental with age But no behold, they go those golden days What if I could go back, back to the time When we used to pay attention to the words and the lines Try to put the pieces back to this American pie And do my best to save the day the music died to save the day the music died They used to play slow jams at the end of the night Back when breaks the chief rocker put an end to the fight They used to play slow jams at the end of the night Back when breaks the chief rocker put an end to the fight They used to play slow jams at the end of the night
Here we go. Are we back? Here we we're go. Back. We're back. We're okay. back. Testing. Testing. Yeah, I think we're okay. on. Um, do you remember Drew's whole yo boom thing? Yo boom. Yo boom. Let's talk yo, about that a little bit. Yo boom. Here we are in mom's backyard filming for a film that I may not see. I may see. I don't know. Am I going to get a free copy of this? Yeah, you'll, 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 you'll get so. uh, two. All right, I'll get two. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> No, we can look at the camera for this one. All that's right, fine. Okay, so do, do you know the... Okay, so Yo Boom, we're at your mom's... Uh, Yo Boom, it's uh, something like clock, socks, bagels, and locks. Yeah. Menswear, silverware, ladies' wear, underwear. underwear. Oh, hang on. I have, shit. I have this shit written down. Okay, I got to... All right, I gotta, take, I two, write it take two, take two. Oh, yeah, that's fine. We'll just... This is all bonus material. 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 Okay, what is this? Yo Boom. So many notes, man. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. Okay. Oh, oh, that's the wrong page. Come on. Okay. So he goes, yo, boom. Here we are in New Jersey. Yo, boom. Here we are in mom's backyard. I guess in New Jersey. <laughs> yo, boom. Here we are in New Jersey in mom's backyard. All right? It's most definitely on clock socks. Well, no, no. You can. You got to say it's most definitely motherfucking on. Clocks, socks, bagels, and locks. Men's wear, silver wear, ladies wear, underwear. Constantly bitch slapping, often. No, 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 I, no, 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 no. Oh, I, I got, I got okay, the modified okay, version. Okay, okay. Men's wear, silver wear, ladies wear, always macking, never lacking. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Always what? macking, never lacking, boom shalaka laka lacking. Constantly bitch slapping, often imitated, never duplicated. Count your change. Count your chains and clank your chains. You got, uh, Wait a minute. Chains. Clank your chains. Clank your chains. So These you gotta chains. Go, yeah, you gotta count your chains. So count your chains and clank your chains. Your chains. That's that's it. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me see that. What? Can you read my doctor's writing? I write like a like a chicken scratch. Yeah, dude. Good luck with the eyes on there. No. This has been modified several times over the years. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. But this this is the new version for. Uh, for whatever year you'll see this in, and uh, I think we did a good job for that. Only Drew can do it. Yeah, well, I know, yeah, but we yeah, tried. Yeah, we tried, we tried. All right. On that note? So, on that note, till next time. Of course. Peace. Thank you. Cheers. Messi, 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 Messi.
Thanks for watching my video.